Hello researchers, how are you? I hope you are fine and doing well. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to configure Windows Server 2012 as DHCP Server. Now before we dive in the practical aspect of configuring Windows Server 2012 as a DHCP Server, let us first of all understand regarding some background of DHCP Server. In 1984, the Reverse Address Resolution Protocol, which is properly known as RARP, was introduced to allow simple devices such as diskless workstations to dynamically obtain a suitable IP address. However, because it acted at the, link at the data link layer, it made implementation difficult on many server platforms and also required that a server must be present on each individual network link. RARP was superseded by the Bootstrap Protocol, that is BootP, in September 1985. This introduced the concept of a relay agent which allows the forwarding of boot P packets across networks allowing one central boot P server to serve host on many IP subnets. DHCP is based on boot P but can dynamically allocate IP addresses from a pool and reclaim them when they are no longer in use. It can also be used to deliver a wide range of extra configuration parameters to IP clients including platform specific parameters. DHCP was first introduced in October 1993 but due to errors in editorial process was almost immediately reused as RFC 1541. Four years later, the DHCP inform message type and other small changes were added which was of 2014 remains the standard for IPv4 networks. DHCP version 6 was initially introduced in 2003 but has been updated in subsequent RFCs and added a DHCP version 6 mechanism for prefix delegation and stateless address auto configuration was also added. DHCP is known as a standardized network protocol used on internet protocol IP networks. The DHCP is controlled by a DHCP server that dynamically distributes network configuration parameters such as IP addresses for interfaces and services. A router or a residential gateway can be enabled to act as a DHCP server. A DHCP server enables computers to request IP addresses and network parameters automatically, reducing the need for a network administrator or a user to configure these settings manually. In the absence of a DHCP server, each computer or other device, for example printer on a network, needs to be statically assigned to an IP address. Now if we go with some general overview of DHCP, let us understand. TH TCP oblique IP defines how devices on one network communicates with other devices on another network. A DHCP server can manage TCP IP settings for devices on a network by automatically or dynamically assigning internet protocol addresses to the devices. As of 2011, networks ranging in size from home networks to large campus networks and regional internet service provider networks commonly use DHCP. Most residential network routers receive a globally unique IP address within the provider network. Within a local network, a DHCP server assigns a local IP address to each device connected to the network. A DHCP operates on the basis of client-server model. When a computer on other device connects to the network, the DHCP client software sends a broadcast query requesting the necessary information. Any DHCP server on the network may service the request. The DHCP server manages a pool of IP addresses and information about client information parameters such as default gateway, domain name, name servers and time servers. On receiving a request from the client, the server may respond with the specific information for each client as previously configured by an administrator or with specific address and any other information valid for the entire network and for the time period for which the allocation is valid, which is also known as the lease time period. A client typically queries for this information immediately after booting and periodically there bef after before the expiration of the information when a DHCP client refreshes an assignment it initially requests the same parameter values but the DHCP server may assign a new address based on the assignment policy set by the administrators. On the large networks that consist of multiple links, a single DHCP server may service the entire network when aided by DHCP relay agents located on the interconnecting routers. Such agents relay messages between DHCP clients and DHCP servers located on different subnets. Depending on the implementation, the DHCP may have three methods of allocating IP. That's called the dynamic allocation, automatic allocation, and manual allocation. 
So if you want to have the more understanding of DHCP server, here are some of the websites which I have opened on uh, taking Microsoft Windows Server online library as TechNet into my consideration and all the links which I will be showing you in this video are available downstairs at the video link. So you can see this uh, video, uh, you can see this website, what is DHCP and why use DHCP, what is the benefits of DHCP. So here in this website you can understand the DHCP architecture, protocols, process and interactions with how the DHCP works. And in this website you can see the DHCP tools and options so you can create the DHCP snap-in, version compatibility, category and all those DHCP options you can see in a very beautiful manner all this thing is properly managed. And last but not the least, that is a DHCP con console icons reference. So here is the basic aspect which is required for the DHCP. So before I configure DHCP server on Windows Server 2012, let me tell you that the server which I will be using is already been installed with Active Directory and DNS. So even without Active Directory and DNS, you can even configure DHCP. And even if the client can be added on the directory directory, even the client cannot be added on directory directory. So which means that DHCP can be configured without Active Directory and even with Active Directory. So let's go and dive. So in this video, I will be using two operating system that is Windows Server 2012, which will be acting as a domain controller as a DHCP server and Windows 7, which will be acting as a client to take the IP addresses being, uh, by giving the request to the server and getting the IP address to its clients. So let's go to the Windows Server. You can see this is the Server Manager and you can see that there is Active Directory, there is an App Server, there is a DNS and even the IIS Server. So you primarily require that is Active Directory and the DNS. So if other servers are also installed, there is no need to worry, you can do it. And even without even Active Directory and DNS, you can install DHCP Server without any hiccup. So the same steps will be there. Just one configuration window will come add-on which will be available only if the AD is installed otherwise it will not come and the working will remain the same as thoroughly covered in this video. So let us first of all install the role of DHCP so that the server can function as a DHCP server then we will be configuring the DHCP server and then we will be coming to the client and I will be also giving you two aspects in this video the first that is getting the client as a random IP address from the pool of IP address and then we will be also reserving one IP address for the client by using the MAC address as the base aspect for that. So let's click on add roles and features. So here you can see that there is a wizard over there. So click on next. So here we have the role based or feature based installation that is configure a single server by adding roles. So click on next. So here we have to select the pool in which we are having the two IP address. One is for DHCP for uh, connecting the server to the internet and one is for the local IP which is for AD. So click on next. So here we have the DHCP. So click on this and you can see that there are some add-ons which are required that is the role administration tools that is DHCP server tools. So click on add features and after that click on next. So no need to have anything over here. So click on next. So here is the configuration for DHCP server. So click on next. So we confirm that we have to install the DHCP server and role admin tools that is DHCP server tools. So nothing rocket science over here. You just have to click next and select the options. That's it. It's very easy. So now you can see that the installation has started and within a matter of one to two minutes, depending on the server to install, it will be completing the DHCP installation. And then we go with the configuration part of DHCP to make this server acting as a DHCP server to give the IP address to the clients and give some other addresses like a gateway address or a DNS address and even the time server address to the clients. So you can see that the installation has started. It will, it is about 13% which has been completed. So it will take some time. So you can say that about 63 is there. So you can see that it has taken me less than a minute in order to uh, configure the server as a DHCP server. And if you follow steps, there is no need to worry. You will be configuring the DHCP ser uh, server and DHCP service for clients in a very beautiful manner. So you can see that the configuration required installation succeeded on server 2k12.anand.net, which is the name of the complete name of the computer as well as the complete name with the AD address. So let's click on complete DHCP configuration. So here is the this link it will be coming that is post install if you have, a, have Active Directory installed. If you don't have uh, Active Directory installed then it will not come. So you can see that authorized DHCP server on the target computer. So let's click on next. So use the following credentials that is my username and the administrator that is the domain name and the administrator. So click on commit. 
So you can see that the status has been done. So creating the security groups is done and authorizing DHCP server is done. So let me click on close and I click on close. So now what you have to do is to click on tools and go to this DHCP. So you can see that there are on the left hand side, let me drag it for this. So there is a DHCP, there is a server name that is server2k12 which is the machine name dot anand.net is my active directory. So this is a fully qualified domain name. So I just go over there and you can see that the checks are there and we are having two types of IP addresses that is IPv4 and IPv6. So because I don't uh, have to configure IPv6, I will be only confirming regarding IPv4. So I just click over here and now you can see that there are server options. So right click over here and I click on configure options. You can see that there is some general and advanced. So let us uh, start with the fit uh, as you can start with the policies. So you can say right click on the policies and click on new policy. You can say there's a policy name you can say that is a DHCP policy server 2k12 so I click on next so you can see that there is a policy if you can configure if you want to configure you can do it so even if you want to create you can just click on right click over IPv4 and click on new scope so over here now I will be telling you how to reserve a pool of IP address and configure this server as the DHCP server. So you can also see the various options like server options, policies and even filters. So click on next and here is a name that is I can provide that is server 2k12 DHCP and I can say that is DHCP server even if you can skip you want to skip. So the where is the start address? So I recommend that if you want to start the IP addresses, start from the second IP, leave the first IP because it is already reserved for the server. So I give the start IP as 192.168.1.2 because 1.1 .1 is reserved for my server. So you can see that the length and subnet mask has already been there and uh, depending on the class of IP address, it is A class, B class or C class, the length and subnet mask will be automatically configured once you put tab and come to end IP addresses. And, and suppose the end IP address will be between, uh, I can say if you are using the C class, as you can see that it is about 254 computers you can add. So if I want to add about 50 computers or 60 computers, I can give the range. So I can have to have 50 computers over here. So I just click on next. So if you want to have some exclusions or delays, you can do it. Otherwise, there is no need. So click on next and here is the lease duration because as you can see that every DHCP server will provide you the IP address for some period of time and here is the 8 days you can even configure for 5 days, 2 hours, 15 minutes or 20 minutes after that the client will automatically complete the lease and a new IP address will be allocated to the client from the server with the pool of the available IP addresses. So I just click on default you can just do whatever you want. I click on next so I just want to configure these options now. I click on next so here is the router address the default gateway which is the server IP address that is 1.1. .1. I click on add. So I click on next and there is a parent domain so you can say that the server name will be that is server 2k hyphen 2k12 dot anand dot net. So I click on resolve you can see that the IP addresses has been resolved so I click on next and if you want to have any win server so it is required otherwise I don't use any win server so I click on next and I want to activate the scope now and I click on finish. So you can see that the scope is there and the address pool has been there so what I do I just click on refresh and I click on refresh again and now what I have to do is to click on all tasks and you can just click on pause, restart or anything what you have to do. So you can see that the server on the service stops and now it will be started. So let's wait till it starts. So you can see that the right checks are there and it has been working. So now let us go to the client. So here is the Windows IP address. So you can see over here if I go to if I click on the network sharing addresses you can see on the, on the adapter settings if I right click over here I click on properties you can see there is a static IP which has been allocated to it so I just what what, you, what we do we just obtain IP address automatically and obtain DNS server automatically and I click on OK and OK and what I do you can see that the IP address has been allocated so I just go to CMD and I just go to this address that is called IP config. You can see that from the anand.net 1.2 has been allocated. If I click on IP, if I go this command IP config slash all, you can say, you can see that the, the IP address has been allocated over here and here is a DHCP server, here is the DNS server. So even what I can do, IP config slash release and it will be releasing the IP address. 
So now if I type this command that is ipconfig, you can see there is no IP address. So what I do, ipconfig slash renew. So you can see that the IP address has been allocated. So which means from this we can say that the anand.net server that is my server 2012 is working actively as a DHCP server. So now what about reserving an IP address for the client? Suppose that if I want to reserve 1.46 number IP for this client, for that I need to get the MAC. So there is a get MAC command. So the uh, the uh, the MAC is that is 0800.2794.d423. So what I do, I just go to my server back and I just click on server and I click on properties. You can see that there is a scope name, there is an IP address, etc. So over here we have the option that is called reservations. So right click on the reservation and click on new reservation and the reservation name is that is client computer and IP address which I allocate is 46. Suppose this is a 46 uh, and I have to give the MAC address. So for the MAC address, I just have to check it again 0800, 0800. Just go again. It's just troubling process. 27 and 94, 27, 94. And here we have D4 and 23. So D4 and 23. So you can say both is there and I click on add and I click on close and I just refresh the server. So you can say that the server is there. So now let us re uh, release this IP address IP config slash release and now when we renew let's see whether the 46 IP has been allocated or not. So it will take the time which means that we are through. And yes, you can see that the IP address that is 46 number IP has been reserved. So in this video, I have demonstrated how to install DHCP server, what is DHCP server and how to configure the scope options, what are the different scope options, what are the scope, what is the server options, policies, filters and even I have uh, given you some commands, what is to be client for, uh, uh, for renewing the IP address and even for reserving the IP address for the client. So I hope that you like this video, do like this video, do subscribe to my channel, do share with your friends. Thank you so much for watching.